time to meet in the middle. Baby, we are meshing, we are collaborating, we are putting the details into place. We've decided that we vibe, we like the activities described, we are comfortable with our limits and boundaries, and it's on to planning. Figure out who's bringing what. The worst thing that you can have happen is have an elaborate scene planned, show up in the place, and no one's got the goods. Know who's bringing what toys. I strongly, strongly recommend if you need to order any supplies, do so with plenty of time in advance. Shipping is still super shitty and slow. It's just the reality. Even if you pay for expedited shipping, there's really not a guarantee. And like, it would be a super bummer to have like an electro stimulation scene planned and not have the neon wand that you need for the electricity play. So definitely get your goodies ordered plenty of time in advance. Whenever you're playing with a new partner and there is a toy that is something that is a little bit challenging to disinfect, go ahead and order something new, something fun, something for the two of you to enjoy again and again, particularly if you know you're going to be playing with this person on a regular basis. Pick a location. And when I say pick a location, I mean thoughtfully pick a location. What are you doing? How loud is it going to be? Are you going to have hotel security called on you because there's the sound of bullwhips coming from the bedroom? Fun fact, yes, security can and will be called on you in hotels if there is the sound of bullwhips. Even if it's just bullwhip practice for a legitimate bullwhip competition at a Western stock show. That's a true story. Happened to a friend of mine. Thankfully, they weren't doing anything kinky and like the Western show was in town. But still, you get my point. Location is key. I happen to work at the Chicken Ranch, which is located just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, and has a beautiful dedicated dungeon, which is a kinks and fetish specific space with furniture and toys and all sorts of wonderful things. Keep in mind, it isn't fully stocked, and so you still want to meet in the middle and figure out who's bringing what goodies. Does the location have them, or do you need to go shopping first? Now you've got your location picked out, it's time to figure out the goals. What are you going to specifically be doing with the space and the goodies and the person and the fetish? Make sure that it's reasonable and make sure that it's realistic. While it sure sounds fun to swing from the chandeliers, unfortunately being hogtied to a chandelier and spun around is a potentially dangerous and very expensive endeavor. Do not recommend doing so. Make sure what it is that you want to accomplish is actually in the realm of possibilities. How much time do you have? How much setup is required? Can you even accomplish it with that person? A lot of kink and fetish activities absolutely required at least one of the parties to be experienced, particularly true if you're playing with ropes, bondage, bullwhips, floggers, anything that can fall into the extreme or edge play kind of category. You just cannot expect your everyday person to be able to tie you up and suspend you safely. In fact, I would be extremely concerned if somebody offered to just put me up in the air out of nowhere. That's a red flag. These things require expertise and experience which also means you have to have realistic expectations of your partner. If you choose somebody who doesn't have the experience and you're both brand new, expect it to be a first new experience for both of you. If you're working with a professional, well, that's a totally different story and different set of expectations. This is the time, this section here, to over-prepare. You can write out your lists. You can prepack advanced. Have extra goodies, outfits, whatever it is. Over preparation is absolutely better than under preparation. 
have ongoing communication with your partner during this time too. Scenes and experiences don't happen in the void. They happen in the real world. So definitely have that communication going back and forth. Just keep it reasonable and realistic. The other person probably isn't able to do text messaging 24 seven with you to make things hot and heavy leading up to the date. You know, gotta keep things in the reasonable realm, but also definitely communicate. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll choose to join me live for Coffee with Alice at 10.30 a.m. PST each and every Thursday. Make sure to like this video and then subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification. This way, you'll find out each and every time I go live and you'll never miss any new content. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!